Our next session is by Georgie George. He's a seasoned business leader with over 20 years of experience in media, broadcasting, sports, brand management, entertainment, digital and live events globally. Currently, he's the founder at GoNuts, Asia's largest and most influential platform for human connection, communication and commerce using celebrities to make lives richer. Now, I'd like all of you to join me in uh, welcoming uh, Georgie George, and he will be talking on how content is shaping celebrity commerce, the GoNuts story, and in conversation with him is our very own Ruhail Amin, Senior Editor, Exchange for Media. A very warm welcome to both of you gentlemen. Thank you, Kathy. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Kathy, and uh, welcome, George, uh, to this discussion, and thank you for your time. No, it's my, uh, my pleasure. <laughs> Uh, I want to start by asking you uh, the journey that you have uh, had over the years and uh, what was the startup, you know, what was the inspiration behind the startup, if I may ask such a simple question? Yes. Um, so, you know, I was um, fundamentally in Singapore for a long period of time, you know, working with MTV Asia, with Yahoo, and then with a brand consultancy called the Global Brand Forum, where we used to do country branding. And one of the things that we did was we actually created an event for the government of Singapore called the Global Brand Forum. And in one of those uh, engagements, I had the opportunity of listening to a futurist, a brand futurist, um, you know, called Faith Popcorn. And one of the things she said, and this was almost a decade and a half ago, she said, we will have communities online and these online communities will work or will engage with avatars of or behave like avatars of themselves and engage with people who are their avatars. And people right. will forget to touch, people will forget to hug, and there will be places where you will have to pay to get hugs. Now, this seemed like she had lost uh, you know, her head or she was actually talking out of her hat. But look at where we are today. And so that kind of stayed with me. And, and one of uh, you know, all the other two co-founders happened to be at a birthday party of a friend. And they, uh, you know, the, the whole conversation engaged around what happens if one of the cartoon characters were to pop out and wish that child in a personalized video message or some kind of personal way. And these two right. ideas collided when we met. And that was the birth of Donuts. Right, right. You know, there is an overdose of celebrities. If we see, we are seeing them everywhere now. So many platforms. But tell me, Gona definitely has curated a different experience. What kind of a, how do you use content to your advantage? You know, amidst this entire uh, cacophony of celebrities, uh, celebrities everywhere. So that's a very good question, Royal. Because uh, at the end of the day, what is our purpose? I think one has to distill this back to when you, the you know, the era of the ex in this era of the experience economy, the differentiation is going to be about content. It is not about how many stars you have or how many people are on your platform. If you cannot navigate the content uh, uh, part of things to be able to connect with your customers, because the whole right. idea is our purpose is to bring joy and memories to make people's lives richer. That's that's from where we started. So. If we were to do that, what do we need to do to build a content strategy? And by content, it's not about creating our, our idea of creating content is creating powerful videos using our celebrities that would create memories in the minds of the customer and make, you know, truly create an immersive experience for them, both offline as well as online, because that memory at a wedding, at a birthday party with a family just creates a multiplier effect. And that's from where we started off actually focusing on content and not about 300 celebrities, 500 celebrities or whatever number that people throw uh, on many other platforms. Uh, our focus has been, can we sit with the artists and curate that content to create an immersive experience for our customer? Right. Right. You have a roster of uh, great uh, singers and other you know, top uh, actors. Can you tell us um, what kind of uh, messaging are like dominantly, predominantly uh, kind of uh, in demand in the market? And is it just limited to the urban centers? Where's the demand coming from for all this content? Actually, Ruhel, uh, you know, what's really interesting, and I, I'd, I'd like to attack this question a little differently. So what we did was, one is about, we understood that content, only when you build content and you create a very powerful connection, can you build a community? 
So these were the three pillars of our strategy. Build powerful content, make sure that that content creates a connection, and from that connection, build the community. So what we did was we fundamentally worked with artists, and we, and we kind of understood that people's needs are not limited. We, I mean, if I were to ask you a question, Dorel, you love music. I'm sure you love eating out. You love, you know, we are a, we are a summation of various experiences. And that's the power of the brand. Um, right. If I can actually be able to touch you through various people uh, who are part of your fandom, and we all are fans of somebody. It could be authors. It could be culinary experts. It could be musicians. It could be actors. And the idea was what, therefore, would touch you or touch somebody who wants to make an impact to you or you know cares enough for you to be able to do that or give you a wow experience with somebody you care for and that's from where this kind of began so what we have done is ensured that we are multi genre multi lingual multi price points and more importantly uh, available across multi platforms so our distribution tool is what we have done is, for example, we are on creds. Uh, for example, we are on, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, on uh, bulbul.tv, uh, so, which is a social mm -hmm. e-commerce platform. So all of these things uh, are our strategy to make ourselves available uh, on demand uh, and everywhere the customer is. Right. You know, there's also a very sensitive element uh, as far as uh, dealing with celebrities is concerned. For example, a small controversy in the entire system kind of, you know, has to be dealt with. Uh, as a, as somebody who, who is closely working uh, with these people, are there concerns? I mean, how do you kind of uh, uh, foresee such or try to avoid such conflicts if, if ever they arise? Uh so, you know, in the last eight to nine months that we've been in existence, we've never had a single controversy at all. So I would really go down to a very basic, um, should I say, core idea that people inherently are good uh, and people inherently don't want to manipulate things, especially when they've got a great experience. So it comes back to the experience economy. It comes back to the kind of content that you give them. Uh, and more importantly, answering your uh, part of the question. So how do you save yourself from any such kind of an embarrassment? The legality on the site, the terms and conditions of engagement uh, indemnifies both the artist and the platform should any of the videos be misused for any reason. Right, right. Tell me, when we look at uh, globally where we stand as far as uh, you know, celebrity influencers are concerned and using them in a very personalized way, how evolved is this market in India compared to the rest of the world? And where do you see it going? I mean, what's the scope in this? I think I would answer that question in two ways. One is, what is the growth of video commerce in India? And if you see, what is the, what is the growth of UPI or, you know, um, uh, payments online in India? What is the growth of the online video market in general? And you would see that all these are exponentially going, growing by over, you know, between 50 and 100 percent. Uh, to be honest right. with you. I mean, when you see right. that your average dhobi is transacting on Google Pay, you know that UPI has really dived deep. I'm of the opinion mm -hmm. that something like this, and especially we have grown on fandom. We are equally comfortable listening to Coldplay as we are listening to Kishore Kumar. We are equally comfortable watching Robert De Niro as, as, as Shah Rukh Khan. And therefore, the point is, and today, if you look at from a sociological point of view, people have forgotten to communicate. People have forgotten to read. People have forgotten to write. People have forgotten to express, which explains why mm. things like depression is cool, if you know what I mean. Mm. So the whole idea is we are constantly looking for a via media to communicate. Let's go back. Let's flash back to 20, 15 years ago when you walked into a store to buy a card for your mother or your girlfriend. Okay, let's take a girlfriend right. as Hypothetical example. You went to the card right. center, you looked at the cards, you went to the section that says love, you picked up the card, you mm -hmm. looked at the wordings, you looked at the visuals, and then you bought the card. We've moved that mm -hmm. to a video situation. Right, right, right. Uh, there's another concern, you know, what has happened is we talk about, we spoke about one. One is I want to understand from you, we spoke about demographic, and second is the age, you know. Uh, give, it, give me a sense of uh, what kind of uh, customers, I mean, what is the age group like? Is it just the college students? Uh, 
what is domi what dominates this space in terms of consumer uh, profile it's a bit i mean if i were to kind of uh, mirror this it would be what were the initial uh, pick up from demographic point of view as far as um, e-commerce was concerned it wouldn't be the mm -hmm. college kids it is more somebody mm -hmm. who has a little more uh, dispensable income and would therefore mm -hmm. go online because he's heard about this product to test it he first went down to the low hanging fruit and low value products and slowly went up the arpu chain that's how we will build arpu but what's really important right now is that there is no definition is it more female or male certainly right now it's more male uh, uh in that sense of the word uh, i would think that it is anybody from about 25 all the way up to 45 to 50 who are currently uh, purchasing this it's still a very metro centric phenomenon but we are right. betting us uh, on the fact that as this moves into tier 2 and tier 3 cities there is going to be an explosion of video commerce and with the explosion of video commerce and broadband and all of the other factors that will help giving this uh, tailwind we will be able mm -hmm. to really make this a successful business right. and actually make the youth one up to the rest of asia absolutely absolutely uh, mr george uh, tell me uh, every, this pandemic has impacted all the sectors all the businesses uh, was i mean of course i mean just want to understand how did you what was the kind of impact it had on the kind of work that you do was there any impact at all and how did you deal with it well there were two kinds of impact the first impact was we actually had a term sheet that was signed up before and we went into covid and that went into cold storage uh, so that was the first impact but i would think that we thrived during this covid for two reasons one is we really understood the value of resilience we understood what it is like to make sure that your allocation of funds and money with what you had uh, is effectively put to use and to make sure that you work lean and um, you know and effectively and last but not the least it really made us think hard about developing a product that makes it stand out from anything else in its category uh which i think would not have it happened if it weren't for the covid so we were forced to rethink on a lot of things that we thought were uh you know kind of um, bible truths in that sense of the word but i you know going forward we realized that those content strategies really needed to be revisited for us to be able to create the product that we have today right uh there's another factor which i want to, i think you would best know this uh, uh there is a when we talk about celebrities we have always looked at bollywood and maybe cricket mostly you know we have kind of narrowed down to this mm, do you think we need to redefine it in some way or is the redefinition already at work uh, and are you pushing the boundaries of the definition of celebrity that's a very good question royal in fact we did push the boundary from the time from from its inception to be honest with you we were the first to actually have a set of impersonators uh, if you've gone to our site you will see that donald trump is also there by the way and we were the first to bring him in uh, we were the first to ensure that musicians we fronted it with musicians and not your typical television stars or bollywood stars we were the first to bring in uh, celebrity chefs we were the first to bring in photographers we you know and now we're creating a layer of authors uh you'd be also very very pleased to know that we have milka singh the legendary milka singh also coming on board go nuts in in a couple of days from now um uh, you know jeev milka singh um uh, you know john t roads now these are people uh you know who typically would not have looked at a platform like this probably a couple of maybe even a year ago uh but the right. opportunity and seeing the kind of uh, work that we are doing the kind of what our content is what our objectives and what our vision is and also seeing the run rate of you know company and brand that we are building in they find themselves uh saying yes to be to align their brands with ours right right so offering these solutions uh, in a very kind of a, a b2c environment uh, but do you think brands like of course brands involve a lot of celebrities and they need influencers is there a kind of uh, are you looking at that side as well is that already a part of your uh, you know uh, strategy going forward it is already a part of our strategy and in fact what is really important is we to aim to really disrupt the 30 second commercials that are done by the big agencies and and big production houses uh we the you know the covid has also taught that 
and uh, that it is you have to be able to translate your brand attributes uh, when you can't shoot a 30 second commercial uh, in a location and with uh, you know over a couple of days and etc and people have done that with their phone uh, we our aim is to be able to cater to almost 800 over a million MSMEs in India that have no access to talent or access to big agencies. And they still need to get their brands out there. We want to be, our success will come from complete hyper-localization of our product where your Kirana store guy will use our product to be able to send a message out to the entire area around where his business is to let them know and using a celebrity, be it a Ranveer Brad, be it whoever it is, to be able to let people know that they can come to his store and use his services. Now, that is going to be the success and the opportunity. We have also done in the COVID, actually in the, in the time that we had supported MSMEs, uh, you know, because it was a time where employees were, you know, really, really feeling low. Uh, they were very unsure about their jobs. Everything was in a bit of a turmoil. We supported a lot of startups by giving away free messages, which free corporate messages of, of encouragement. And another area that we definitely will be looking to disrupt is the HR uh, area. Because, and what I mean by HR is not just the processes or payrolls or those kind of things. I'm talking about engagement and communication. HR today communicates right. when you hire or you fire, but we are looking at newer ways for the CEOs and, and people within the company to talk to stakeholders and who better than a celebrity from a recall perspective. And these are all new areas that we are working on and have actually started engaging with a lot of clients who are very excited to use our product. Right, right. So when it comes to content marketing, for example, uh, you have uh, you know kind of got the pulse on it. Uh, are there any best practices in your view for all those people who are watching us and all those young bloggers even? Are there any uh, definitive steps that you take and you kind of have that content uh, that, that is watched by audience? Is there a rule book to it in your view? The rule book evolves, but if I were to broadly put it into three different you know, kind of verticals or three different pillars that personally I follow, it is fundamentally to localize, to Indianize and to humorize. These are the three things that I do to follow a pattern because that, what are you trying to do? You're trying to bring a smile, a moment of joy, a memory. And we've got numerous case studies, be it Shankar Mahadevan reading out a poem of a, of a poet sitting out of Varanasi who, wanted, who wrote it for COVID warriors to somebody who sent right. it to a ailing father, uh, somebody who sends a thank you to a doctor. All, I mean, if you were to look at it, I mean, some are sad, some are happy, but it's all about hope. And the idea is, can we use the people on our platform to create a moment of memory in the lives of their customers? Right. So you used a very right word, humanize. And we're talking about big data, AI, VR, and all of that, and robotics. And where? how do you humanize this? That's also a big challenge. I mean, how do you build that tone of kind of that connect? You know, Is it difficult? Is it easy? Just want to understand it from you. It's so what we do is, you know, I've had the good fortune of working with many of these artists who are on this platform um, and, you know, in various capacities, be it from music or television or or even with when I was with the sports and WWE, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that we definitely do is co curate this with them. So it's about having those conversations to for them to understand what we are trying to do. If you look at any platform, even globally, uh, you would see that a message is sent uh, almost transactionally and without any humanization or humorization of their content. Mm. And both pillars are important. For example, we've just got Shekhar Sumanji on board. Now, Shekhar Suman mm. is somebody who's, I mean, can I, it, it's also about making sure there is a cohesiveness between their online persona and their offline persona. If I were to right. make him say a message to you, Rohail, which basically, hi, Rohail, uh, wish you a very happy birthday, all the very best. You'd look at, you know, you'd go back and say, that's not the shaker I resonate with. I want to be able to laugh with it. And our whole thing is you have a brand. You are a brand. You have certain attributes of a brand. What the consumer at the end wants to see and what he's buying you for is to relive his memory of you as that brand. And that's what makes him laugh. That's what engages him. So that's basically what I follow as my rule book. 
and we as a company follow as a rule book to be able to co curate the content with them to be able to create memories in the lives of our customers. Right. Uh, Mr. Joyce, tell me, uh, uh, what are the big roadblocks uh, since this is an evolving uh, kind of uh, genre, I would, if I may use this word, you know, as far as content is concerned, what are the big challenges that you are navigating to make it more popular, to grow beyond? And what's your vision for Go Nuts maybe over the next two years? So I'll start with the second part first. Our vision is to become Asia's largest and most influential platform for human connection and communication. Uh, so we don't look at ourselves as a shout out platform or a celebrity platform. We look at it as bringing joy in the lives of our customers. That's our purpose. And everything is defined from that. Coming to the roadblocks part. Yes, there are some, you know, people may think that this is such an easy business and I have a fairly good connection in the market. I can bring this star and bring that star and put it together. It's not as simple as a thing because for starters, you know, we, for example, from a, from a content strategy point of view, if I were to look at it as a triangle, uh, there's a lot that goes in terms of consumer insight. There is a lot that goes in terms of understanding what the experience is going to be. And last but not the least is the performance marketing part of things. So if I were to look at it as a triangle, these are the three pillars of the triangle. And the last part is constantly finding out through, through performance marketing, what is it that drives the communication with the customer? What is he like? What is he not liking? Where is he engaging? How much is he engaging? How much is he sharing or whatever, whatever. The, so the one of the biggest roadblocks is, is, as I said, the perception that this is a very easy business. Therefore, the barriers to entry sometimes is fairly, you know, people mm -hmm. feel I can start this off. Teen, you know, teen child, this slogan will take care of it. You will see in the next five months, 90% of most of the platforms that are in the market will cease to exist simply because it is also a demand creation business and not just a supply generation business. So we have to look at it from both sides of it is just like e-commerce. You can put as many enterprise stores on the platform, but if there is no you know, demand and there is no transaction, you'll not be able to do that. That said, I think we are sitting on an asset value of the platform of a couple of billion dollars because of the sheer you know, value of each of these artists. If you look at them right. from their own business's point of view, tomorrow when this pipe is opened out to tier two, tier three, and tier four cities, okay, uh, who have thus far not had access or a trusted source to be able to create interactions or experiences, imagine what this will do for a person sitting in Varanasi, a certain sitting in UP in Harpur, uh, and that's the market. Absolutely, absolutely. I have two more questions. Uh, one is that, you know, I, it just reminds me of my days when I used to be an entertainment reporter and uh, we would talk about celebrity contracts, especially Bollywood, being too complex. So when you sign contracts, are they still complex or have they become to easier levels to come down? These well, days? you know how uh, that artists hate complex contracts, right? right. <laughs> that said, we must know that the idea of getting into any contract with an artist is for them to be able to understand that there is a commitment between two parties. It's not to make sure that it goes into legality. No one wants a legal situation. And I think it comes from a stems from mutual respect and what we do for them. Um, so Ruhel, uh, you know, also being somebody who's worked closely with artists, uh, respect begets respect. Uh, and what you do for them, and if they see what you do for them, is really, truly enhancing their own brand image and brand value. Because what we are doing for them, and in many cases, that's the reason why we've grown exponentially, is because we have actually been able to create a viable and you know fairly large alternative source of income from their free time. Right. Because this is not something they can do with their shoots. They can still perform. They can go to their weddings. They can do all of that. All you need to do is put a phone like a selfie, record this message in the way we've decided to create it, send it out, and the money hits your account. You know? Absolutely. And, you and if you look at it. Yeah. No, I'm saying if you look at the current uh, state of affairs where the vaccine is around, but the pandemic continues and there are no film shoots as such, I think this is the platform that you have. I think. And we've proven so, it. Uh, so we've, you know, what's really interesting is that when I went out initially to speak to artists, 
everyone's a bit skeptical, but they, you know, want to do, you know, they love, they, they, they know me um, uh, and they, they, they respect, you know, the, the lineage that I have, having the good fortune of working with many companies. Um, and it was almost like, okay, Joji, to bull right, chalo, let's see what happens. Today they say, bro, you really surprised us. We never thought this is the kind of income we'll make from this, you know? And so now people are taking this very seriously. And that's the beauty of what the pandemic. So in some, some ways, the pandemic has been also a blessing for us because artists have now begun to look at this a far more seriously. And they understand that this is a viable and an and, and incredible source of additional income to their earlier portfolios. Right. My final question, uh, what is your message to your uh, subscribers and those who would be your subscribers? What would you like to tell them? Well, the only thing is, let's go nuts. <laughs> and, uh, and by that, I mean, let us give us the opportunity to create joy. Please come onto the platform. Please know that the artists that are there actually are you know, waiting for you to, uh, to be able to deliver that, that, that uh, piece of joy uh, to somebody that whom you want to communicate to and create a moment of happiness. Um, and I think just as we saw the, the advent of e-commerce and how people slowly began to adopt, this is a change of consumer behavior, obviously. Uh, but give my, you know, where I am really, uh, really heartened is the fact that we are in a scenario in our country where e-commerce is now, and thanks to the pandemic also, is exploding. Mm -hmm because people have had to use the internet to buy products to be delivered to their homes since they couldn't step out. Why I'm really being very extremely encouraged is because we are now getting into a scenario where broadband has gone deeper. If you see the YouTube report, uh, or you see the Hotstar report, or even the KPMG uh, ecosystem report, the growth of video commerce in India or the growth of the online video industry from a mere 3 million, uh, sorry, 50 million to about 3 mm -hmm. billion by, by to 2023 uh, is just goes to show that we are in the right direction. And this, you know, the, with a little bit of tailwind, all of these factors. And I also believe that in spite of all that has happened with the pandemic, I'm hoping that we as a country will rebound in a way, um, you know, where people will go out, they will spend, they will want to kind of make up for all the lost time of last year. And uh, Gunats will be in that position to make their lives richer. Absolutely. It can't be more true because everybody is going digital and that is the way forward. And thank you so much, uh, Mr. George, for joining us for this discussion. Thank you, Rohit.